Thomas Jones. I'm the uh, owner of Energetic Hands. Um, I get messages from I get messages from God. So that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this live today. We we tried to well, we actually did one last Friday. We we had a lot of issues, a whole bunch of issues. Uh, this work that I do is is real. These demons are real. And they tried everything in their power to stop it last week. Um, the young lady princess that I was working with, she had to come to my office so we can do it because we had electronics breaking. I think her light broke. I had crazy stuff going on with the phone. I had crazy stuff going on with my lights. So, um, so we had to do what we had to do to try to, you know, to try to get stuff out. So, so far everything feels. Uh, pretty smooth, but leading up to doing this, um, it's, yeah, it's been rough. I mean, they do not want me to release this stuff that I got, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna release it. So I think everything is gonna go uh, smoothly tonight. So the uh, first thing I wanna say is, so I do have students that I work with uh, that have prophetic gifts, like one of them, her name is, her name is Mercy. So as I was getting this information, um, of course I didn't let anybody know because I was getting it probably right up until a couple hours ago. So I didn't want to really talk about it to once I had everything. Um, but maybe about four days ago, uh, she called me and she said, uh, you know, she had been fasting and she called me and she said, um, God told me that she was going to be talking about uh, Egyptians. That's what she said. So I was like, hmm, how she know that? But that's the truth. Yeah. And I was like, how she knew that? Then I thought about it. I was like, well, I forgot she got gifts like I got. So that's how she knew. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, the message is, it's about ancient Egyptian, uh, it's ancient Egyptian, Egyptian information that he, uh, that he gave me. And um, the information really, it, it really shocked me. And also, it's about why people's prayers are not reaching him. So that's what that's about. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a, a recap from Friday. Um, I'm kind of just run through those things real quickly. And once I do the recap, then I'll roll into the message that he gave me and what he wanted me to put out. And then after that, if there's any questions about anything, you can just, uh, you know, reach out, you know, ask your questions, type them in the comment section and uh, answer the questions. So, <clears throat> so what I, so who I'll be talking about today, let's get to that. So my whole, cause I got pictures, so I'll be showing you pictures as I talk. And so, like I said, this is a recap from last Friday. So this is the person right here that I will be, let me see, that I'll be, that I'll be talking about, okay? So this name is uh, Yeshua Hamashi, okay? Some people say Yahshua. So that's the person that everybody calls Jesus, but that's not his name. His name is Yahshua or Yahshua. Um, during the time that Jesus Back back in his time, back in his days, the J wasn't even created, man. So that was just a name that was made up. He actually came to me in a vision and told me that his name is Yeshua and that uh, he's the son of the Most High God. So that's why I'm showing you that. Also, some things that he told me, um, I know a lot of times we always say him, him, him. But God is masculine and female energy. So, which means uh, he's neither male or female, well, both male and female. So, <clears throat> he's also non-denominational, so he's not tied to a religion at all. The angels are not tied to a religion at all. Um, he also told me that when it comes down to religion, um, when it comes down to religion, that's, that, that's the issue in religion. It's actually, it's, it's a spirit. So, religion is a spirit. And he told me it keeps people in the box and it keeps division within people. And I can give you an example. Like I've had people that have uh, come to me needing help, but you know, they'll just go on my website, they'll read reviews, 
And then when I asked, okay, well, what took so long? And they'll say, well, because of my religion, my religion tells me, you know, not to come and seek this type of uh, help. You know, everything needs to go through the church. Um, and I said, okay, well, did you go through the church? Did you talk to your pastor, whatever the case was? And they said, well, yeah, I, I did, I did, but it, it did nothing. So that's when I decided to come to you. So that's a prime example how religion will have you in the box. So she suffered for like another three or four months going through her issues of depression, anxiety, and suicide um, when she didn't have to. But that was the reason why, because she felt like at first coming to me would be wrong. So after that experience, she told me that she need to rethink some things. Okay. Also, God told me that there is not one religion that is accurate or correct, not even Christianity. He said there's not one that's correct. It's issues with all of them. Just to let just to let you know about that. Um, <clears throat> and I also talk about how my gifts came about. So I got injured back in 2015. I used to be a crane operator. I got injured. I had a, a air conditioning unit that fell, hit me in the head, and that opened me up. That took me through what we call a spiritual awakening. So I went, I started going through this awakening. I started seeing visions, dreams, and um, that's how my gifts started opening up. I always, always had gifts ever since I was small, but never really paid attention to them. I thought, hey, this is something that everybody uh, goes through, everybody deals with. So um, I never really, I just really never focused on it or looked at it as, you know, that it was more than, than, than what it was, but now I see. So uh, I ended up developing to a, I developed into a prophet, um, which we pretty much know what a prophet, a prophet is. A prophet is just a person that can hear from God. I'm also what they call a mystic, meaning that I get exoteric information um, and God speaks to me. So I learned directly from God instead of learning from uh, religion or learning from um, the Bible. So he comes to me, he shows me pictures, uh, he gives me the type of information, he gives me the type of, the type of information that I received leading up to now to talk about. Uh, also an energy healer. Um, so I'm able to heal people with something called chronic energy. We all have what I call prana that is in our body, that is healing energy in our body. And we absorb this through, uh, through the air, through the earth, and through the sun. So we all have it in us. Uh, I'm able to heal with it and manipulate it and to, you know, I can, I can heal people. I work with all different types of injuries as well. So what I'm gonna do uh, now, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll move in. I'll move in into uh, my services now. I'll run through that real quick. So uh, like I said, I was just discussing um, pranic healing. So that's what I do. So pranic healing is basically a form of healing using life force or prana energy. That's all it is, using energy that comes from the sun, the air, and the earth. Okay, this energy comes out of my hand. It goes in the body. It's a, not, a no touch uh, procedure. So, I mean, I never touch you, hold my hands a couple inches away, and this healing energy goes in the body, and it starts to, uh, it starts to heal the body. Also, I work with, uh, when I'm doing this pranic healing, it is two bodies that I work with. Let me show y'all pictures of this. Uh, one is called, well, we know we have the physical body, and then we also have uh, the invisible body. So, of course, we know the physical body. Of course, we know the, uh, yeah, I got some weird stuff going on. Anyway, of course, we know the, the physical body. Um, that's where your organs are, your major organs. Then you have your invisible body, which that's the body that I'm able to work in. The invisible body looks exactly like your physical body. The only difference is the physical body has organs. The invisible body has chakras. I'm going to show you some pictures of chakras so you can get a, an understanding of, um, of what the chakras, what the chakras, uh, what they look like. So this is what your chakras look like. So if you look, you'll see that you have... Uh, these different colors that are running from the head, from the crown, all the way down to the feet, okay? 
and you see these round you see these round balls or, or, or circles i'm trying to get this thing right yeah you see these round balls or uh or circles so yeah they're called chakras and what they are and what they are they are major power stations within the body so each each chakra controls like uh major major organs in your body so i'm able to go into those major organs um I'm able to uh what are the chakras I'm, a, I'm able to go into them i'm able to clean them and i do something called energizing that's when the prana energy is coming out of my hands the chakras are about the size of uh, a softball you also have smaller ones like in your hands and your feet they're called minor chakras they're about the size of like a, of a quarter so yes yeah, so i work on those and i'm able to go inside of this invisible body and that's why i do the healing at um it's funny because before I start, I have to actually wash from my elbows down to my hands with like uh, antibacterial soap. Because when I'm working on people, I got to be careful because I can't absorb whatever uh, issues that whatever issues that they have. I'll, I'll absorb it. So different things I got to do to keep myself protected. So uh, this color that you see, that's called the aura. It's seven layers. I work with two. So I work with the one that's close to the body and the one that's mm -hmm. furthest away from the body, which is called the health aura. I'll show you that real quick. Uh, oh, and this is another picture of the chakras from another from another another view. So that's how they look. So they spin. Sometimes they can spin in the wrong directions. Sometimes they can uh, have what I call diseased energy and I can clean that up. It's just like a car, it needs to be aligned and balanced. So I can go in and uh, pretty much fix all of that. Also right here, this is, uh, this is your aura. So this is the health aura, the one that I work on. And I can see it, when I see it, it looks like a white, a white cloud. When it's healthy, it, this is how it looks when it's healthy. And um, it's like bristles from a brush, and it's supposed they're supposed to stick out, stick out just like it's doing, and that protects like bacteria and um, different viruses from entering your body. Now, an unhealthy person, I'm gonna show you how that looks. This is an unhealthy person right here. This is what their what their health aura will look like. If I can't get these pictures right from that. Um, so yeah, so it, as you can see, how it's drooping and sagging. And um, that's basically uh, health. That's basically showing you uh, a person that's sickly. Okay. All right. So, uh, so now we'll move on to some of. Uh, let's see here. We'll move on to some of the uh, the different clients that I work with. So I've worked with people. Uh, um, working with someone now that has stage four cancer. Well, when she walked in, it was stage four cancer, uh, issue with the lungs, neuropathy, and also was going to uh, chemo. She was also on chemo. So now uh, the issues of the lungs are, are not showing anymore in the CAT scan. Um, she's been off chemo for four months, and also the neuropathy pain is gone, and the tumors in the liver have shrunk tremendously. Um, I know she'll be healed. You know, I know God will definitely heal her. There's no, no, no doubt in my mind. And also uh, with her attitude and, and the way she speaks, she speaks positive all the time. That's one thing you would always do when, you, when you're going through something as far as trying to be healed. You want to always be positive and manifest your healing. You want to always wake up and say, I'm healed. You know, you always want to say that, you know, I'm in the process of healing. I want to never just say, I'm sick. I'm in the process of healing. I'm in the process of getting better. I'm already there. Those words are really important. Uh, also working with someone that has a liver issue. Um, and I'm working with him. And when I work with him, I can smell alcohol. I can smell like beer. I can smell liquor. Um, as I work with him and I'm cleaning that out of his liver, I can smell it in the air. Um, sometimes he'll have to go to the bathroom because the prana, the pranic healing is filtering out, his, his liver is healing it. He used to throw up three times a day. And since I've been working with him, um, he doesn't throw up at all anymore, all right? 
Also, I've worked with someone that had an issue with a runny nose. It was an older lady. She had a runny nose. This was going on for like two or three years. She went to the doctor. They couldn't figure it out. Uh, she came and had a session. Her nose doesn't run anymore. Uh, I work with people with shoulder issues, knee issues. I mean, all different types of, of uh, issues. Had someone that had a surgery done in the ball of his foot. Uh, he's a sheriff and he stands a lot. So it was hard for him to stand. So he came and got some healing done and he no longer has any pain in the ball of his foot. Uh, also, I'm working with someone that uh, fell off of a two-story balcony, fell off a two-story balcony, fractured her foot in two places, dislocated it. And uh, I have pictures, so that's that's what it looks like. Looks like that. So this was taken while she was in a, the hospital. You can see how open it is. And I actually was hanging on that piece of meat. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all, cover your face. Whoops. Um, so after uh, that happened, she rested for about four days. Then I came over. And when I came over, uh, I did a session of the pranic healing. Um, and I came back five days later. So we'll say uh, about... I came back five days later after the healing. So we say five days later after the healing, this is what it was looking like. So you can see at the time it took down uh, the swelling a lot and the healing. That's another picture. It took it down, so it's healing up. Uh, healing up pretty good. All right. So now I will move on to uh, this last client that I'm going to talk about that had uh, back issues, shoulder issues, also a lot of disc issues in the lumbar area, uh, shoulder issues and a knee replacement with like three surgeries and was real, real painful. She was experiencing a lot of pain. And I know when she came to me, everything was about at a 10. I uh, worked with her and in a session. And when she left out of the session, her pain level, I believe she told me it was about at a one. And then I think the knee might not have, it was between a one to no pain at all, is what she said. Uh, maybe uh, say four or five days after that, she sent me a text and she told me, she said, uh, I just wanted to let you know, I got up at two in the morning, I got on my knees, I prayed and I was able to put pressure on my knee. She said she hasn't been able to put pressure on her knee in over 20 years. So uh, that was a real, that was a real great thing. We were both excited about that. All right, so now what I wanna do now is I wanna show you some pictures real quickly of, I'm gonna show you some pictures real quickly of the healing energy that comes from my hand. It looks purple. This is when I was working with a client in a wheelchair. So just pay attention to my hand is hanging. And uh, you might be able to see it. You, you might not. I keep showing those. This is one that's close up. This might be better to see. Are y'all able to see that color any? Y'all can see that purple? Okay. And this is another one that's kind of up close. I can't really tell if you can see it or not. But uh yeah, so it's purple energy that's it's purple energy that's uh that is coming out. All right, so now I'm gonna move to another service that I provide, which is uh deliverance. All right, so the way I do deliverance or remove demons from remove demons from people, uh I wasn't sure what to call this. I mean, I knew it was deliverance, but uh, Archangel Michael came in and he told me, he said, you are interviewing the demon. That's what he called it, interviewing the demon. So when a person comes in and they tell me they have issues, I'm able to sit with them, connect with them, and I could tell if they have a demon. I can see the demon. Uh, so I'll start talking to the demon, retrieving information. The demon will start telling me how they're affecting the person's life. Uh, and how they're just making it, you know, just making the person miserable. I'll see images. Uh, I'll see images of the demon. And it's been times that I've seen uh, demons coiled around people's necks. Uh, it's been times I've seen the demons have their hands above the person's head and moving it like strings of a puppet, telling me and showing me that that's how they manipulate a person. 
Uh, it's also been times when I've seen them sticking their hands in someone's head and moving around as if they were staring. It was, and that's showing me that they're drive, they're trying to drive the person, uh, trying to drive the person crazy. So when people come to me with anxiety, they come with me, come to me for anxiety, depression, and some of them are suicidal. It's a demon that's attached. So I'm able to take them through my deliverance process and to remove that. And I do that through a series of spiritual baths. Everything I do is holistic. Everything I do is of uh, this name right here, you're sure. So I'm not connected to anything else, but the light and God. And that's with nothing dark at all. Um, so yeah, so that's what I do with that. So I'm able to, I'm able to remove that. Also, I do, uh, I do house cleanses as well. Um, I had a, I had a, a client that had some issues going on in the house. Uh, they had a dog cage inside their room, but the dog was scared to go in the cage for like over a month. So I came over, um, cleansed the home out. And as soon as I left, I know everybody think I'm crazy when I tell y'all this, but as soon as I left and I was looking at the dog, I was something just told me, look at the dog and his, and his eyes. So me and the dog had like a connection. And um, the dog winked at me. <laughs> so the dog winked. So uh, I left and I told the owner that the next day. I said, look, your dog winked. She contacted me and she was like, you won't believe it. I said, what happened? She said, the dog is now going in her cage. And it's hard for us to get her out of the cage now. So I said, okay, cool. That, wow. So the dog was back in the cage. So we knew we had something in the house. And as I was cleansing her house out, uh, I was feeling like some small attacks, different things on my neck, different things on my back. But I was able to get the house cleansed out. And um, the dog is in his cage now. Sometimes people will have portals open up in the house and not knowing the portal is just a, a door for demons to get in and out. When you're buying like a uh, a house that previous families stayed in before, uh, they can leave like negative energy behind. This negative energy can connect to you, uh, can cause arguments. Uh, if they was drug addicts, I mean, whatever issues they had, this stuff can't stick to you. So it's always good to have your home cleansed out. Uh, I'm gonna show you some pictures now of a house cleansing that I did for a young lady. And in this house cleansing, um, the rays of God came in. So this is what they would look like. So this is this is one of them. You will see how thick how thick they are. All right, this one is even thicker. And this didn't show up until after I I cleansed out. Mm -hmm. This is a, another one. Yeah, another one. And so I also had a, a eight year old boy that had issues and went going in his room. So I came over there and cleansed the house after he came to me in a dream, held my hand, took me into his closet and showed me where the demon was at. And I was able to see the demon. Um, when I came to do the house cleansing and I walked in the home, the first closet I went to was the one he showed me in a dream. And this another picture of the house after I finished with it. So yeah. So that's just letting me know that uh that God is in the that God is in the home. All right. So I have another service that I provide, which is helping people to build altars. I only help people to build uh holy altars, this is what I do. Um some people don't really know what an altar is. So an altar is just a sacred space for you to spend time with God. So that's your sacred space with just you and God and y'all talk. It's a stronger way for you to be able to connect with God. Like I said, I only build, help build holy altars. I don't get into other altars because there's other ones that you can build. But like I said, with me, I always stay on the safe side and I stay working with God because we know God is pure love. So we don't have to worry about anything negative coming in or you know anything. Uh, demonic is going to come in. And also the last service that I provide uh, is coaching. So I do have a group that I work with and these are people that have uh, gifts that maybe they don't understand or they need help to try to fine tune the gifts. 
And it also helped to keep them on the right path because when you have these spiritual gifts, it's so easy to veer off in the wrong direction. And then you'll be doing what we call witchcraft, doing stuff for Satan and not even realizing it. It's real tricky. So it's just always best to stay with God. That way, you know, you're always you're always safe. And that way, you know, you won't get yourself tangled up into some stuff that uh, that you don't know about. OK, so so what I'll do now is uh, so I'm finished talking about I finished covering the services that I provide. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about some ways that demons can enter you. And um, I, of course, I'm getting this information from people that I've worked with and I've talked to the demons. And this is the these are some ways that they're telling me. So, of course, it's more than what I'm going to give you as far as how many ways they can enter. But these are just some of the ways I encounter. So one of them is uh, lying of hands. OK, so you have a lot of people that go to church and the pastor, you know, he takes his hand and put his hand on your head. And you see people shake and fall. You got to be real, real careful with that. Uh, one thing that I've heard demons say is that when it comes to pastors or just men of God, women of God, uh, but they really focused on the man for some reason. Well, men of God, that they're, they're very weak. They tempt, they just tempt them with women all the time. Uh, and what happens is, if it's not a true and real man of God, which according to what the demon said, they told me the number is very, very low. Very, very, very low. But uh, the lying of hands, what happens is, Let's say if you get a pastor that's not a true man of God and he's constantly lying hands on people. So let's say he started and he and he laid hands on maybe 30 people. OK, now he's gotten to you. So what's going to happen is all of those people that he's touched, he's pulling stuff out and it's jumping in him. It's 30 people. So by the time he gets to you and lays his hand on you, everything that came from the other people plus him will go in you and i know this is true because i work with a young lady that experienced that as well so you got to be real real careful about letting people put their hands on you and pray on you especially your head the crown of your head that's what everything is so it can transfer through the crown of your head the next the next way is sex uh, you got to be careful with that as well uh, especially the club is like the playground for satan Let's say, for example, if you're a guy and you like a uh, light skinned girl with a big booty, that's what he's going to send to you. And it's called an agent. And when they send this this agent to you, her whole goal is to have sex so the energy can come from out of her so it can go into you and she can have demons. So that's how you transfer. That's how you transfer uh, the demons. That's why. When you start talking about marriage, the whole thing about marriage is just being with that one person, because when you're dealing with all of these different people, each time you have sex, uh, it's, it's deeper than, you know, spiritually. But each time you have sex with a person, you're connecting to that person and everything they have in them is transferring and it's coming to you. It'll come to you. That's just how it uh, that's just how it goes. All right. Next thing is uh, masturbation. You need to stay away from that. The next thing is alcohol. You need to be careful with alcohol because a lot of people don't know, but alcohol has grain in it. And the grain in the alcohol will create, it will create uh, tears inside your aura. And when it creates these tears inside your aura, that's how the demonic, these demons can get in. Now, if you notice when you're drinking, what is the name of the alcohol or what are the name of the drinks? They call them spirits. <laughs> they call them spirits for a reason because they really are spirits and that's how they're getting you. So this is your aura right here. And uh, those colors, it'll be ripped and that's openness. That's like doors for them to, 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 to get in. And that's what they'll do. Uh, another way will be drugs. A lot of people that I'm, you know, that come to me, they say, OK, well, you know, I don't consider shrooms a drug or I don't consume, you know, I wouldn't consider marijuana drug. It is a drug and that's a way that they can't enter you. Uh, tattoos would be 
another example. You got to watch out for tattoos because uh, you get these demonic tattoos and that's another door. And that's how things can also uh, get in you. Also, another way is something called astral projection. A lot of people don't really know about this too much. This is something that I found a lot of younger kids are doing. Um, they go on the internet and they try to find ways to leave out of their bodies. That's what they do. They leave out of their bodies and travel to different places. You got to be careful with that because, like I said, things can attach to you with that. Also, the music. You got to watch the, the type of music that you're listening to because uh, repeating different lyrics uh, could be demonic. And that's another way they can get into you. Also, depression and anxiety. They can attach to you that way. Suicidal thoughts. They can attach to you that way uh, because your guards are down. You're real vulnerable. Also, they can attach to your bloodline or like a generational curse. And I can give you an example of that. I'm working with a, well, was working with a young lady that was pregnant. And I was trying my hardest to stay close with her because I kind of knew how the situation could possibly turn out. And they was fighting me super hard because the, the way the demons look at it is it's a two for one deal. If they attach to the mother, they're already attached to the kid before the kid is born. So you have to be real real careful with that so she didn't even make it through the full deliverance process she stopped okay so since she stopped what's going to happen now is the demon will be attached to her kid all right now let's just say her kid grows up her well the kid will grow up. her kid grows up has a family and then their baby will will have a demon and it keeps going and going and going and that's how you start this generational stuff so you got to like nip it at the bud. Uh, also, witchcraft, you got to watch out for witchcraft. A lot of people doing spells and buying candles and just manipulating people to fall in, you know, to, to fall in love because they want to be with somebody. And um, which this stuff, it, 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 this stuff will work. It'll work because I've heard of people coming to me and this stuff, this stuff works. Uh, one thing that I found out since I really got into this whole spiritual lane, I said to myself, this really is, to be honest with you, <laughs> this work is uh, is really worse than some of the stuff that I've seen in the streets. And what I mean when I say that, let's just say if you're in the streets and let's say you fight and then you shoot somebody, okay, it, it, it may be a camera around, but if not, you know, it may be a witness around, okay, so it's a chance you can get caught. Well, dealing with the spiritual stuff and that witchcraft, you got some people that can put things on you. That's all they need is a picture. That's all they need. They can send something to you and put this spirit or whatever they want to put in you. And how are you going to prove it? You know, that won't even make it to court. People are going to laugh at you. I mean, it's people that I've heard that have sent the spirit, uh, homosexual, homosexual spirits to people. People think that this is something that uh, you that you grow up with, or uh, I've heard so many different things, but no, it's it's a spirit. I've dealt with people, and I've had sessions with that too. And the way it happens, it starts as the spirit of confusion first. So that's the number one step. It'll confuse the person, and that's why you may see. I'll give you an example. Let's just say if you see two girls that are together, but the girl is messing with another female that's manly okay she's confused because if you're gonna do that you can just mess with a man but she's confused so it'll start off with that and then it turns into the gay spirit or the lesbian spirit so that's how it is i work with somebody that's she called herself a non-binary and that was my first time hearing it and um the demon told me i'm the one that's causing the confusion in her head so that's what they do all of the, all of these things are spirits uh, also being abused, uh, molested, all those traumas, all those types of traumas will uh, open doors for demons to come in. And also, uh, I'm going to show you some pictures too. So <clears throat> these are some ways that, well, some things you need to stay away from because these let demons in. So this right here is, uh, this is a Ouija board. You should never, ever, ever mess with this because this open doors up it's a demon that's connected to this ouija board his name is zozo that's the name of that demon this demon possesses people okay so you always want to stay away stay away uh for now 
Also, another picture of the Ouija board. A lot of people do seances with this, trying to conjure the trying to conjure the dead. They do all types of stuff. So yeah, you need to stay away from that. Also, again, a Ouija board. And that thing that you see, the lady with her fingers on, that's what they do. They ask the Ouija board questions and they and they just lightly place their fingers on that. It's called a, a placetta. So you lightly place your fingers on that and you ask it a question and it will actually move to yes or no because it's spirits that are controlling that. But that's the door that you're open, opening. So you want to stay away from that. Also, this is called the pendulum. They swing this back and forth to ask questions. This is another thing. Stay away from it. I dealt with a client that was asking um, this thing questions about a guy, if he was good. And it was basically a setup. It was a bad dude, so it broke her heart. So, But she based her decision off of the answer she got from this. This is another picture. They swing it back and forth and ask, yeah, and ask questions. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you these is called dowsing rods. With this right here, you might you may see a lot of ghost seekers on TV using these, but actually I know some other people that use these too. And uh they're trying to find spirits, right? So you see how it's straight. And when you see a spirit, it'll cross like this. These are dowsing rods. That's another way that they will uh that they will enter you. So be careful with that. Stay, stay away from it. And also, let's see, I'm going to move into, there was a lot of information, but, uh, but you need to know that. Also with this right here, this is the fireball. It's a drink that everybody like to take shots of. So that red thing that you see, that red thing that you see right there, that's uh that's a demon. His name is uh Ariok. This spirit is what they call the vengeful spirit, or the spirit of rage, the spirit of uh extreme anger. Um, and it also uh instills the spirit of bitterness in you. So you want to stay away from this. And the funny thing about it is um I'm in Virginia and they don't have liquor and what well, didn't have liquors in, in the grocery stores but people i don't even know if they're paying attention they selling shot bottles of this in the grocery stores all over the place i don't see no other liquor but this one which that was just uh that was strange to me so yeah you wanna you wanna definitely stay away from that all right so now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna jump into I'm gonna jump into some more signs and symbols here. Let's see what we're gonna do again. So, so this right here, we know the blue cross stands for Christ. The red one is what the Satanists use. That's the upside down or inverted cross. So that's their symbol for Satan, all right? Now, I'm also, I'm also show you another symbol. <clears throat> so this symbol right here represents Satan horns. A lot of Satanists, you'll, you'll see them throwing this up and they'll be saying, hell Satan, hell Satan. All right. Now I'm going to show you something that you didn't know. So God is telling me that it's so much that's going around that people, uh, eyes are closed, they're shut, they're not paying attention. They're doing this all around you, you're just not paying attention. So if you look at this right here, you'll see this uh, Bush granddaughter, I think Jenna, Jenna Bush or something like that. But you see the sign that she's throwing up. Also, Same thing. Those are the signs of the horns. Also bush. Signs of the horn. Also
So your main man. Ball rock. Signs of the horn. You gotta watch this stuff. And you know, Furby throwing them up. So they doing this all over the place. You're just not really paying attention to it. Okay. So I want to show you that. So now I'm going to move. Now I'm going to move into the message. Okay. So the message that I received, the message that I received from God, and I told you that this was all connected to ancient Egyptian Egyptian stuff. That, that, that's what it's all connected to, ancient Egyptian. So I'm explaining this the best way that I know how. All right. So, okay. So it's history behind this. Okay. So it's history behind it. So there was a there was a pharaoh, and the pharaoh name was Echnopton. Okay. That's what his name was. He was a ruler. Uh, he was a ruler in e in Egyptian times. Way before, way before Christ, he had a whole lot of power, a whole lot of power and a whole lot of influence. So back in those days, they worshiped several gods. Okay, but this ruler wanted to change the way they were doing things. So what he did instead of worshiping several gods, he narrowed it down and just worshiped one God. He told his people, we're gonna worship this one God. So the one God, that they worship his name was amen ra all right he goes by a few other names too he goes by ra horus he also goes by the hidden one or the secret one okay so back in those days they never knew what the hidden one and the secret one stood for that's always been a mystery uh, so this ruler told his people we're gonna change the way we're praying. We're gonna always pray to Amen Ra. This is a powerful God. So whenever you pray, what I want you to do is, I want you to put the word Amen, Amen, at the end of your prayers. That way that signifies that we're always praying to this God, okay? So that's where the word Amen comes from. A lot of people don't, they, they don't know that. All right, now, the word amen, in the Hebrew Old Testament, it's in there 30 times, the word amen. In the Greek New Testament, the word amen is in there 162 times, okay? All right, now remember, his name is Amen Ra. That's his name, he goes by also the secret one, and the hidden one, all right? So now what I'm about to show you are uh, signs and symbols that are all connected to Amen Ra, all right? So, so the first sign is called a unk, all right? So with this unk, you may try to research it or people that think they're familiar with it, they'll say that this part right here represents the shaft or the penis of a man. And then it'll say this part going across are the lady fallopian tubes. And then they'll say this circle part right here is the lady's womb. All right, you see a lot of stars wearing this. Um, I believe they know what it represents, but you see a lot of them wearing it and you hear a lot of different things. It's a demonic symbol and uh, you need to stay away from it. I did deliverance on people and God has told me to uh, pretty much pray over the tattoos and to also anoint them. And when doing that, you close the portal. This is how demonic things get into you. All right, we're still talking about Amen Ra. All right, this right here, it's a couple of different names. They call this the all seeing eye or you may hear the eye of Horus, or you may hear, let's see, the eye of Horus, the all-seeing eye. Um, and they say that this sign is for protection, okay? That is absolutely wrong. <laughs> Stay away 
from this symbol, okay? All seeing eye, eye of raw, eye of Horus, I'm in raw. It's all the same. It's the same thing. I just gave you like four of oh, the secret one, the hidden one. All of it is, is, is the same. This is the eye. Stay away from that. All right. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures. Okay. Same thing. When you see people making this sign, that is the same thing. That is Amen Ra. Let's call it the, the all seeing eye, the eye of Ra. But still, all of this is connected to Amen Ra. Okay. That's why you see her covering her eye. Something else you probably didn't pay too much attention to. On the dollar bill, the same thing. You see the eye? That's the all seeing eye. I'm in raw. That's his eye. People always say, you know, that represents, you know, um, that money is the root to all even all that stuff. But it's not that the money is evil, it's what the money will make people do. They'll do evil things. All right. Same thing. People don't know. You got Beyonce and Jay Z. See what she's doing. That's the the eye of Ra. Amen, Ra. They're making these symbols and these signs. Okay. Now, also, this sign also represents something called the Illuminati. All right. That's a secret society. Illuminati. I'm not going to get too much into that. I'll talk about that another time, but it's a secret society. Same thing. Another one. Jay-Z. He calls this sign the rock. It's not the rock. This is the same thing. I'm in rock. That's his symbol. That's his sign. Okay. Another one. Beyonce again. Throwing up the sign. People not paying attention. They're thinking it's the rock sign. And these people are so influential. They have everybody else throwing it up. And when you're doing that, it's a demonic sign. And then you're opening doors for yourself. Same thing again. Jay-Z. Throwing up the rock sign. Always the rock sign. All right. Even got the billionaire Warren Buffett. Okay, these are all the rich people throwing up this sign. This is Amen Ra. Okay. <clears throat> now, this one right here is really going to uh, ruffle your feathers a little bit. You know what this is? It's the Delta Sigma sign. Okay. Every time you're throwing that, you know, the ones that are in it, every time you're throwing these signs up, you know, throwing up a demonic sign because you don't know. But that's what it is. You're throwing those signs up. Okay. Now, let's get to pictures of Amen Ra. This is Amen Ra. Okay. You see how he's holding that unk in his hand. Well, this stuff is demonic. He has a bird head. Demonic. So this is the one that I'm telling you. Amen Ra. The secret one and the hidden one. What's his name? Okay. Again, I'm in raw. Okay. Last one. I want to keep emphasizing. I'm in raw. The secret one, the hidden one. Okay. So, now that I showed you all this, I'm just holding this up so you can see. So, God is telling me to tell you all of the people out here that are praying and saying amen at the end of their prayers, you are praying to Lucifer. So, if you ever said a prayer with amen in the end, you are praying to Lucifer. He's telling me to tell you that your prayers are being stolen. So stop using the word amen. I have so many people that come to me and they say, you know what? I just constantly pray. I pray and nothing's moving. God is telling me the reason why nothing's moving because you're not praying to him. 
you think you're praying to him, but when you use the word amen at the end of your prayers, it changes all your prayers and everything is going to Lucifer. You're, you're going, you're praying to Lucifer. Amen Ray, he told me, is Lucifer. So when I went to get this picture, once he told me it was, was Lucifer, to get this picture, I immediately started feeling nauseous. I felt a bunch of pressure and pain in my, in my chest. It was like it was an instant attack. Now, something else that's funny about this, when I went to retrieve this picture, guess who was holding that? It's a lady that's holding it. The lady that's holding it is a high priestess in a satanic cult, which confirmed the information I got. And she pretty much said that the same thing. You know, Christians or believers don't realize that they're saying amen. And the ancient Egyptian culture stole the word. So when you're praying and you're putting amen at the end of your prayer, just to tell you again, I want to emphasize, you are not praying to God. You are praying to Lucifer. So this was what this is what the message was to tell you remove the word amen because it is connected to amen ra which is lucifer so you can use other words at the end of your prayer you don't have to put a word but if you're trying to find a word i give you a suggestion you can say you can say your prayer and you can say in the name of the most high or you can end it you can say in the name of yeshua or yashua so, I'm going to say it one more time, just in case somebody was had to run and get some Cheetos or drink some root beer or drink a Capri Sun or something like that. I want to tell you one more time. When you are praying, do not use the word amen. If you use the word amen in the end of your prayers, you are praying to Lucifer. Okay? Now, when I got that small attack, when I got this picture, because I found out God revealed to me who the hidden one was, who the secret one was, and it is Lucifer. The Satanists know this stuff. All of them know it. And that's why they worship it and they laugh and they say, oh, all the Christian people, all the believers, you know, they, they always saying, amen. Now, when I got this picture, God said, go to Facebook. I went on Facebook and he said, now start looking. And when I started looking, I couldn't believe it. As I was scrolling down the screen, that's all I saw was, oh man, oh man, oh man, I oh mean, I mean, it was jumping out at me. And the first thing I said to myself, how in the world am I going to be able to get to all of these people that saying this stuff? How can I do it? So it's the same thing like God, when you're talking to God and you're praying. Now, we pray to get closer to God. So if you've been praying a lot and you're using the word amen, you think you're getting close to God, but actually you're pulling Lucifer in closer to you and you don't even realize you don't even know it. So that is the message. Find another word to use. Remove the amen from your prayers. You didn't know, but now you know. Okay, so if we got any questions, let's go ahead. Let, let's 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 go with it. I said the same thing. I said, dear Lord, too. I said, woof. When I see and I went on Facebook, I'm talking about everybody that spiritual people. That's all I saw was ah uh, man, ah uh, man, all over the place. I mean, even like with the post that I was putting up, people comment. People just, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, all the way down. Every time you're doing that, you're giving praise to Lucifer. Every time you're doing that, you open up a door. Every time you're doing it, you're pulling him, you're pulling him in. Oh, okay. So, so uh, let's see. What have we got any questions here? Yeah. Yeah. I don't see no questions. I think everybody might be speechless. Let me see. All 
I guess I'm gonna give everybody a second to let it sink in. <laughs> and then, uh... oh, I'm out. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, I hope y'all hear it. Yeah, they're trying to stop me. I know it probably froze, but did y'all did y'all hear what I was saying about the uh, the ah man? I want to make sure you got that. I know it probably froze up, but did y'all get what I was saying about the ah man? And don't use it at the end of your prayers. Did y'all get that? I can't see. Let's see. So what should you say instead? So instead of saying, Amen, you can say in the name of the Most High or in the name of Yeshua. But no Amen. Yeah, no more Amen. So somebody said I was froze. Am I still froze or can y'all or can y'all see? I mean, yeah, can y'all see me? Can you hear me good? If you can see me and hear me and I'm not frozen, can somebody say yes? I'm telling you, if y'all can see my computer, it is, it's messing up big time. I mean, I know this thing is, is pissed, but, uh, I was gonna make sure I got it out. Leading up to this, I was feeling sick and all types of headaches. Um, also, not only that, it was a lot of nightmares that I had and it's still messing up. There's a lot of nightmares that I had leading up to this non-stop. They did not want me to put this out, but uh, that was gonna happen. I heard it all, okay, that's good, let's see. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, so the amen stuff, yeah, it goes all the way back to the Egyptian days, all the way back, and uh, it's just a trick, and that's why when people come, oh, I'm praying, and you know, nothing's moving, nothing's happening, because you're praying to Lucifer, can you, uh, let me see, I'm telling you, I'm trying to read questions. The stuff is jumping around by itself. It's highlighting. Uh, let's see. Let me see. I don't know. Hold on. I'm trying to see if I can get to these questions. But the thing is, like, I don't know what's going on with this thing. We still hear you, yes, yes. Let's see what else here. Can you, re somebody say, can you repeat? Let me say. I'm trying to see if I can find a, can you repeat what to use instead? Yes. Uh, when you're praying, instead of using the word amen, you can say in the name of the most high God, or you can say in the name of Yeshua. You can replace it with that. But do not replace it with amen. Because if you do, again, you're praying to Lucifer. The hidden one, the secret one, amen Ra. Uh, specifically, do we pray to incorporate? Uh, I mean, you can pray any way you want, but I'm just talking about what you're putting in the end, the end of your prayers. You know, it's what goes at the end. Because as you see, if you think you're praying to God, but then you put amen in the end, it changes up everything. So if you say in the name of Yahshua or in the name of the Most High, then, you know, 
you're on the right track. You know, because like I said, uh, God is not receiving. God is not receiving the prayers. The prayers are going to Lucifer and. You know, you worship in Lucifer the whole time and, and you don't even know. You think what to do if you think you encounter another demon? Hmm. If you think you encounter another demon, then you would need deliverance to get the demon removed. If you think you encountered another demon. Yeah, it, it, it's starting to just like, let me see, it's, let me see here, I pray the Holy Spirit to, I pray in the Holy Spirit, to the only begotten Son of God, Christ Jesus, our Lord, when we pray, when we pray with people, should we touch hands? <coughs> uh, I don't, you know. That's another tricky one, because like I said, things can jump on you. So my suggestion, unless you really know the person, I think I would probably stay away from that because that's another way that things can um, transfer. Things can jump in you. So, yeah, I, I, would, I would definitely stay away from that. Let's see here. What does the book of Revelation and amen, amen, is closely closing the prayer the word of God and reading his will. Well, um, like I said, that word has been, it's, it's, that word has been, <laughs> that word has been put in. God has also told me some stuff about that in the Bible itself. And he told me his word has been twisted, is what he told me. He said, my words have been twisted and misconstrued. That's exactly what he said. Robert, please read the fake quote on page. Was saying in Jesus' name, Amen. A bad habit. Yeah, yeah. It's, it really is a habit for everybody. So, yeah, that's why you gotta really take your time. Oh, I got one more thing too. I almost forgot. So I asked him at the end. So I asked God. I said, "Do you have a message to tell the people?" That's what I said. And he gave me a short message. He said, "Tell them I love them. Tell them I love them." And for them to see through all of the deception in the world, tell them to free their minds from programming and open their hearts to love and always pray for discernment. So that's what he said. So always pray for discernment. So does anybody have any? Any more questions before I close it out? But before I close it out, I need to make sure. I know y'all said I was, I kept freezing up, but did y'all hear the whole thing about Amen Ra and not to pray using that Amen? And, and y'all just, did y'all get that? Just want to make sure you got that part. Yeah, uh, you can still read the, the Bible. I just would avoid anything with uh, amen. Yeah, don't, don't, yeah, don't say that word. What was Bush and Reagan using their sign for with their hands? Um, so that sign was the sign of Satan's horns. Let me find it in my pile of pictures. Yeah. So that was that was Satan's horns. And a lot of them, like I said, are doing this. You know, people are just not uh they're not paying attention to it. I'm talking about, yeah, this one right here. And this one right here. Yep, so they've been doing it for a long, long time. 
But that's why God is saying, open your eyes. Pay attention to the stuff that's going on all around you. Yeah, I mean, even with this, you know, that's the eye of Amen Raw. So all of these things are connected to Lucifer.